right. So due to the COVID pandemic, we're still allowed until April 1st to meet remotely. So the Board of Health meeting tonight will be held remotely um, as the agenda stated and how to, to log into the meeting tonight. Um, right now I have Chairman Fisk, Vice Chairman yeah. Greenberg, Board Member Fickner, Fitchner, I'm sorry, Tom, I'm sorry. Um, board of, uh, board Wait, Select Board Members, uh, Lonnie Tinio and Mike Maroli, and I believe Andrew from the library. That's all I have right now uh, present in the meeting. Oh, Ellen, the town clerk is also on also. Um, so uh, as we know, we'll allow the Board of Health law allows public comment. Please speak clearly so I can get good records for the minutes. With that, um, I will turn it over to Chairman Fisk. And the first thing on your agenda tonight is to discuss COVID-19. Andy? I think we're all aware of how serious the, the later, latest numbers for the virus are. They're just getting worse and worse every day at a rapid speed. And it's much greater numbers than a year ago in the middle of the beginning of the pandemic. We have an email from Ian Labonte from the um, VNA that we, that we use. Would you please read what uh, Ian is said to us, please, Missy? Yep, so um, I Ian had called me at the beginning of the week. Um, they have a lot of positive cases in Menden, um, a lot more than what they had in the past. Um, from January 1st until now, we have 35 active cases and one probable case. Um, her, in talking to her and I asked her to send an email, um, her recommendation to the board is to close town buildings to the public for the next two weeks. Um, let the surge pass, see where we are, and then um, reassess then. Um, in the meantime, also everybody wearing masks while they're in the building. So anyone that does come in by appointment or if this is the way the board decides to go, uh, they would have to wear a mask and that when the town hall or the, the town buildings reopen that everybody would wear a mask while they're in the building. Um, that's her recommendation. Yep. Excuse me one second, just to clarify that one. And I think everybody probably understands it, but I don't want to take anything for granted that when we say close the public buildings that does not mean everybody go home the buildings are closed that's closed to the public and, correct. and the employees will still be working thank you go ahead i'm correct. sorry correct yeah so um talking with and she said that uh I, the town amended for the town for the amount of december had 156 confirmed cases 12 probable um so that would be her recommendation i asked her to put it in writing so i would have her recommendation from you guys and so now it's up for you guys to discuss andy so uh, we we went to this type of procedure last year and to my knowledge it seemed to work very well ellen is here she can give us her um, thoughts on the matter because she's right in the heart of it, right, being right there in the town hall. We know we have the walk-up window where the um, tax collector is, uh, and and as far as stickers and stuff, it can be done. It was done last year. Ellen, what are your thoughts on this, please? Hi there, Andy. Um, I personally, I'm not seeing as much traffic, so closing to the public would probably not be a um, a big deal, except that it's pat, um, tax time. But we do have very good use of the um, um, drop boxes right now. Um, I don't want to see us closing for months and months like we did before, but a short term closing while we're still in the office answering phones and if somebody really needs to come in by appointment, um, I don't really see a, a big issue with that. Thank you. Um, Select Mantinio, do you have any thoughts on this matter, please? Yes, yeah, sorry. Thanks. Thank you, Andy. Um, my my thoughts are that 
we're not closing any businesses anywhere in Massachusetts. The only things that seem to be closing right now are municipal or closing to the public, I guess, would be municipal buildings. <clears throat> there, yes, we have a huge surge in cases. We also have a, a an immense surge in testing. So of course we're going to turn up way more cases, um, especially with this variant. Now I'm not a doctor. I'm not a uh, nurse by any stretch of the imagination. But the fact that we're talking about doing this for just simply municipal buildings is it, 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 it seems a little strange to me. But you know, again, I'm I'm all ears on on what everybody has to say because I'm definitely no expert in it. However, we're open everywhere with no masks. I'm just wondering why the municipal buildings would be any different. All right, thank you. Uh, um, Mike Maroli, do you have any thoughts on this? Selectman Maroli, please. You're on mute, Mike. It looks like he might have dropped off, to be honest. Yeah, Mike left. I would, um, Andy, I would just say um, you have Andrew from the library and uh, your health one of your health agents, Dan, is also on, too. All right, thank you. Uh, let's start with Andrew. First of all, um, um, before we go to Andrew, along the lines of what Marty uh, has touched on, um, some, in, in each case, in each office, Certainly, if we have like our town clerk, she's in that one area. She's the one that's there all the time. And and if if it ma if it makes anybody in any section of either the town hall, the annex, the library, you can certainly say, in my area, you must wear a mask. It does not have to come from the board of health. It does not have to come from the governor. If you feel more comfortable, certainly you can on your own say. If you're going to come in the area where I am, have to work and have to stay, you must wear a mask. So that being said, um, let's go to Andrew, please. So uh, we actually put a mask mandate in place. Uh, I had an agreement with the, uh, the select board, if we should get to that stage that we could do so. Uh, so we put a, a, a mask uh, mandate requirement in place uh, yesterday. Uh, so we have that. Uh, we also have shut down uh, in-person programming for the next two weeks. Uh, shut down in-person programming for the next two weeks. And uh, next week, uh, end of next week, Tara and I will reassess. Uh, she's going to be doing virtual programs uh, for the time being. Uh, so we're not having large groups of people in. I didn't feel like a library sanctioned event in which we bring people together was a good idea at this point. Um, I'm a little reticent about closing the library. Uh, we can do curbside service. Uh, it's incredibly time intensive. Uh, we actually have to put the word out on something like that. Um, I mean, it can be done, but um, I, we don't get, I wouldn't say we're getting a, a lot of foot traffic to Talon's point at this point. Um, I don't know that we have people congregating necessarily in the library. Um, my opinion, I, I personally would like us to be able to stay open. If we have to go to curbside, we have to go to curbside, but we're already doing the mask re requirement. And, um, as I said, we've halted in-person programming for the next two weeks and we'll reassess at the end of next week, whether or not we need to continue, um, to, um, postpone in person and just go virtual. Thank you. Tom Fickner, do you have thoughts on this? Uh, greetings, all. Uh, well, first of all, in general, I would not support any uh, overall um, shutdown of any of the uh, town buildings. I believe what's been spoken by um, um, Lonnie and Andy, Andrew, and um, uh, Ellen, in terms of how they can mitigate um, the situations and steps they've already taken, I believe is the way to go. Um, I do not believe that the Board of Health should step in 
and automatically declare that all the town buildings should be closed. I believe that depending on the function of the building, as Andrew has pointed out, what they do in the library, um, I believe they need to look, uh, you need to look and assess how your operations are on a daily basis. Um, as Ellen pointed out, um, there seems to be very little traffic and probably overall very little foot traffic that comes into the town hall. I know in the past, the steps they've taken um, to mitigate things such as uh, implementing social distancing, uh, face coverings when required, are all appropriate measures to take. Um, you know, doing the appointments uh, for individuals, um, things like that. Um, but I would not support any wide scale uh, mandate by the Board of Health to shut down town buildings. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Alan Greenberg, please. Uh, I'm in agreement um, with the uh, previous speakers. Um, I have, um, I don't, I don't, I don't see at this time um, the need to close the public buildings to the public. Um, however, I, I have no problem with the minor inconvenience of wearing a mask. Um, I know over the last month. I personally have started to wear a mask uh, a lot more than I had been uh, in, in large settings, grocery stores, uh, et cetera. Uh, and some of the uh, businesses that I um, do business in have, you know, on their own, um, you know, are requiring masks like uh, AJ mentioned. Um, so I have no problem with a, a mask uh, guideline uh, at this time. Um, like I said, a lot of the businesses that I've gone into, um, I know I, not in there frequently, but the Muffin House, there is one crew that uh, seems to wear masks and there's another crew that seems not to. Um, so I, I again, I, I have no problem uh, with with a mask guideline or a suggestion at this point, um, but I, I don't want to see. I, I think it would be very discouraging uh, to close town buildings to the uh, public. Back to you, AJ. Thank you, sir. Daniel, would you please chime in on this matter? Of course. Um, first of all, uh, can you hear me all right? I'm. I have to use my phone, so I'm worried I'm not getting good audio. Perfect, crystal clear, thank you. Perfect, not a problem. So uh, first thing, um, my name is Dan Markman. I'm one of the uh, health agents that's hired on the Public Health Excellency Grant for the Blackstone Valley. Um, as far as closures go, it sounds like the general consensus is that folks are a little nervous about closing a town hall because they wouldn't be able to kind of uh, fulfill their responsibilities. Um, I know that a few of the surrounding towns have implemented uh, closures of their town hall, namely Upton and Northbridge, um, mainly as a protective measure for their employees. A few of their departments only have one or two members of staff, so having them forced to work from home or not be able to work at all for a week or two because of a COVID infection would effectively grind that department to a halt. So they've they've done that as a preventative measure to try to maintain their staff. Um, but if if you suspect that uh, Menden will be able to manage, then that's you know that's as it is. As for masks, I would suggest, based on the CDC's current recommendations and guidelines, to institute some sort of mask policy for the town as a whole. Um, now, at this moment of the surrounding communities, only Blackstone has done this, and they've done that only for town employees. Um, but according to the CDC's current recommendations, anywhere that has high community transmission, which includes the entire state of Massachusetts right now, we have an alarming number of cases, uh, they suggest wearing masks indoors regardless of vaccination status, just to um, try to mitigate the spread a little bit. Because at this point, even Massachusetts, which has 
I believe more hospitals per capita than any other state has is almost overwhelmed in its medical uh, health system. So at least for the next month or so, that might be prudent just so that we don't overwhelm our hospitals. Can I, Andrew, uh, sorry, uh, Andy, may I ask a question? It's long. Of course you may, step right in. Sure. I'm just wondering where the data is that by wearing these masks, we're not going to get sick and not overwhelm the hospitals. By, by the masks are going to fix it like we tried this before and they didn't. So I'm just wondering what data we're using to make that assumption. Sure. Uh, I, I can answer that if that's all right. Yes, please. Uh, sure. So since the outbreak began, um, most data has supported that masks will provide at least some protection. It's not an airborne infection, which means if you can restrict the amount of uh, droplets that somebody is spewing out, um, you can de significantly decrease the likelihood of spread. Now, Omicron is a little bit more pervasive, so masks on their own are a little tricky, but it's still significantly better than no protection at all. And there are there is data to suggest that locations that have more strict mask mandates are seeing a reduction in cases. At the moment, Massachusetts doesn't have any sort of mask mandate that it is attempting to enforce, and it is seeing a large amount of cases. Now, I, I, I am not in a position to comment on why the state as a whole isn't in, uh, instituting this guidance as they had in the past, but uh, in this instance where we're seeing such a high outbreak, it would fall to the local Board of Health to try to stem the flow as much as they can. Um, it's not, not as, I, I won't lie, it's not going to be as effective as a statewide mandate, but it'll still help reduce a little bit. It, it will help reduce none. My recommendation will be that we do not force people to wear masks again. They don't work. Half the people don't wear them correctly. And unless you're wearing an N95 mask 100% effect correctly, it's, it, they're not effective. Hey, bandanas, these paper masks that we wear, they're not effective. The data shows this. With respect, uh, that's incorrect. The even, even a mild, even an improperly worn. Okay, sorry. Let me rephrase that. Even the non-surgical masks have some protection. Uh, most surgical masks, which are the most commonly worn, do provide protection. If they aren't being properly worn, sure. But for instance, we don't just because a seatbelt isn't properly worn, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have rules to tell people that they need to wear seatbelts. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, regardless of the effectiveness of the implementation on the individual level, masks are effective. Data does uh, suggest that they are effective. Omicron makes that a little trickier, but data is still out there. It's been out there for three years. So the data, but you keep using the word suggest, and you keep using the word Omicron is trickier, this Omicron is trickier. Look, correct. The, by putting a mask mandate on in mending is not going to help yeah. anything. Anything, not even a little. Um, it barely helped when a, the whole country was wearing masks. The numbers were through the roof. That's a very concrete statement, uh, very absolute. I don't believe it to be true, but again, it's very difficult to disprove an absolute like this. I got. Again, the data does suggest masks are effective. The data suggests that locations that impose mask mandates see fewer uh, or at least less community spreads. That's all I can really say. It, therefore, any community that imposes a mask mandate will see less community spreads. Are you all done, Lonnie? Are you all set, Lonnie? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, Andy. Yes. I, I think I just want to make sure I understand things correctly. If, if the Board of Health were to vote a mask mandate or require whatever you want to call it, this would be just for town buildings. You're not talking about 
requiring all businesses open to the public, blah, 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 requiring them to wear, the, the people entering their businesses have to wear a mask, right? Correct. Okay, because I know some towns have implemented those things, and I, with my conversations with you and Alan, that didn't seem like that was the direction you guys wanted to go. To. Am I right I or am I right? I think that we're pretty much all in agreement on that. On that. Okay, I just want to make sure I clarified that. Thank you. So currently at this time, I don't feel that we are going to uh, make a mandate uh, for town be uh, buildings. Doesn't seem like we have um, everybody interested to do that. And again, if Ellen feels for, when you come to my counter and you want to talk to me, put a mask on. When Jean says somebody comes to her window, put a mask on. That's up to them. They can certainly do that. That's not that's that's their own prerogative. At this time, I think that um, after hearing from Tom and Alan, uh, uh, Lonnie, uh, did I miss anybody, Missy, uh, as far as this subject? I know Mike Crowley is on now. Mike, how much have you caught of this conversation? Um, probably the last five minutes of it. <laughs> okay. I was on, was on, and then I was yeah. having a video issue, and I had to reset. And obviously, now I'm, I'm here, and I can hear everybody. So I don't know if you caught how much of this you caught. The suggestion was made by our VNA nurse to close the town hall. Oh, um, actually, I think she says all public buildings to the public. That does not mean that the employees go home. Just simply to the public for two weeks until we feel, until we figure out if this surge that's happening right now because of the holidays will subside. Um, also, she suggested a, uh, a mask mandate. And was it, was it town-wide, Missy, or just the, because uh, it can't be the public building, she's suggesting close them. She's suggesting just to, on both aspects, just the town buildings. Um, the problem with, uh, at least for us, and I did talk to Danielle and Daniel about this today. If for some reason the Board of Health felt that they wanted to put in a townwide mask mandate, that is very difficult for us with the staffing that we have to do any enforcement with that. So that there, you know, I mean, Anne's real recommendation is just regarding the town buildings to being open or being closed to the public, um, not town wide businesses or anything like that. OK, right. Oh. Thank you. So, so uh, Mike, uh, after going, after going after around, going around the and getting get on Andy, 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 you're echoing, so I don't know what. Are you hearing the echo too? Yep. Let me let me hang up and call back. No, I think it's OK now. No, I think it's all right now. It, went, it was bad for a second. Yeah, it was. OK, thank you. Anyways, Mike, after going through the meeting of all attendees right now, um, Ellen, Tom, Lonnie, Alan, Missy, Daniel, the general consensus is that there is not a need at this time. It's not unanimous, but there's not a need at this time to close the town hall, the town buildings. And again, um, the mask mandate is a, a personal preference for anybody concerned. Are you in agreement or disagreement, or do you have any other thoughts to add to that? Well, my, my first thought is that I, I, I think it's a, I, I agree that, that closing the town hall, just closing it down is not acceptable. Um, also, the problem I see with mandating masks, and, and I don't think it's it's appropriate to any kind of a townwide mandate for masks. But again, the issue with um, mandating anything inside the public building is enforcement. You know, um, how do you how do you make you know a resident walking in who doesn't want to wear a mask wear a mask? But at this at the same time, I also you know, I'm a. I have a, a, a scientific job and a you know a background in engineering, and I can tell you that it's. I mean, Lonnie's not wrong that if you don't, you know, if you don't wear the mask right, it's not 
it's not uh, not as effective. But there's no question that you know if we took some of those KN95 masks that we have uh, around town and made them available when people walked in and they put those on when they walked into the town hall, um, that that would definitely reduce the amount of particulate in the air. And I, I think it, it would do something to safeguard the employees, which is frankly my concern is, is employee safety. And I, I don't think I would not be against, um, you know, for the next two weeks doing something like, um, having town hall by appointment only, because that way, if they had an appointment to see, say, Ellen, you know, they came to the door, you know, if she asked them to put on a mask and they won't put on the mask, then she doesn't have to open the door, right? I mean, it's your it's your decision, the Board of Health's decision to do that. Um, but I don't think it's a good idea to make a, a town-wide mandate. I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to close the building. I wouldn't be against having appointment only for the next two weeks. And, uh, uh, if we did put a mask mandate in the building without doing the appointment piece, I don't know how you enforce it. And I, I don't think it's, I think it's crazy to tell each individual um, employee to say, you know, you have to enforce people wearing masks. So if we were going to do a mask mandate, I think it would need to be in conjunction with um, making the town hall and other town buildings appointment only. Um, you know, the, the library and I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that that's what the, you know, what the fire department's done is they've closed their lobby, right? And the police lobby is already closed. Um, so the people, you know, they go in that vestibule and they can't get any further in. Um, so I, I think, I don't think that's a problem, but I don't know if I'm talking in circles, if that makes sense or not, but that's my, that's, that's my sense of it. That's, that's my thought on it. Thank you. Just to, just to clarify, I'll put that Just to clarify, we were not talking about closing the building 100%. No, 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 I don't think, no, I don't think we should no, close right from the start, we were not talking about closing the buildings where the employees would go home and the buildings with the doors would be shut and all that. It's just like you said, by appointment only, by the window for the tax um collector and, and like that, like it was done before, but it doesn't seem like that is what uh, everybody wants to do at this time. And as far as the masks, it, we're going to probably leave it up to each and every individual in the department. If we have somebody coming in by appointment or otherwise, to uh, tell them if you want to talk to me, you need to wear a mask. Tom Sickner, go ahead. Well, I think my... Uh... The point I was going to make is, has been addressed. I would just like to just emphasize that uh, from my perspective, um, I am only not in favor of the Board of Health taking the step to implement a townwide mandate of any kind. Um, each of the town buildings operate a little differently, uh, foot traffic's a little different in each of the environments. And as what's been pointed out earlier with Ellen's conversations or points and Andrew from the library and um, I think that each building um, should still have the opportunity if they so decide that the leadership of that building should be making the decisions as to what they need to do to modify uh, behavior uh, if they have concerns about, um, you know, uh, COVID. Such as Andrew pointed out, he's going to be making some adjustments um, on his end at the library. Um, and again, uh, what's been mentioned, Mike had mentioned appointments. That's a great, great way to reduce um, the foot traffic in general. Um, so I would like to leave it up. My view would be to leave it up to the individual entity uh, within the buildings as to how they operate, what they need to do to feel comfortable. Again, I am all for making the um, employees uh, feel comfortable in the work they're doing, but the basic concepts of uh, social distancing and, you know, face covering when it's appropriate. Um, the only other concern I would have with regard to buildings, if and I'm not aware of any issues, would be with regard to the maintenance element. If there's any issues with um, ventilation or airflow, if there's no concerns of that nature and those elements operating fine and um, 
then I, you know, I, I would stand on, um, on, on what I, what I'm presenting. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mike, do you have anything else to add to that? It's been very frustrating with this echo. I don't know what's causing that this evening. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, I don't think I, I don't have anything else to add than what I've already said. Thank you. So currently, uh, D uh, Daniel, do you have anything else to add for us, please? Not at this time, no. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate your time. Alan, do you have anything to add for this conversation? Uh, the only thing I'll say is um, to Daniel, um, I appreciate you bringing up the issue of uh, a, a town department only having one or two employees. Uh, if they were to go down, we would uh, lose the function of that department. Um, and as far as you know, masks, I, I feel they're a, a small inconvenience and I personally was never talking about a mandate, but a guideline, uh, a suggestion. Um, but if we're going to go the route where the town departments can uh, decide whether they want to have a mask requirement or not, um, I'll back that. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Your voice has changed. Okay. Um, she's gone anyways. <laughs> All right, so at this time, I don't really feel that there's any action going to be taken in this matter. Is that correct? Andy, Ellen's back. Yes, she is. You there, Ellen? Yep, I'm here. I, I walked wanted, away for a few minutes. Okay, I just wanted to see if you had any th uh, other thoughts on this matter because, you again, you're right in the nucleus of this. I don't really, I um, mean, in, in my own office, I'm going, we're going to be wearing our mask, Peg and I, and we have a, we have a um, sliding window. Um, I think if everybody's left to their own um, devices, as far as whether they want masks, that's fine with me. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure that you feel safe and everything is good. Andy, can I can I ask? Can we at least put them at the put masks at the entrances if they're not there already? Because I, I know Kim told me today that we have a s significant stockpile of them, and it might be helpful to have them there because I've had so many times when I get to the door of a of a building and it says I have to have a mask on to walk in, and I have you to walk back to my vehicle to find one. <laughs> I don't, you, you know. You and me both. Uh, yeah. Ellen, are you privy to the stockpile of masks? I am not privy to the stockpile, but I do have some. I had somebody ask me for one when he came in um, the other day, and I have a couple packages, and I'm glad to give them a, give them out if okay. somebody wants to. I mean, I don't see anybody that goes upstairs. I only see the people that come in my door. Um, do we have that availability? I'm not aware of any stockpile of masks. Okay. Well, all right. Well. I'll follow up. I'll follow up with Kim, or maybe Lonnie. Can, we'll follow up with her, and, and I just think it should be. They should be distributed to the departments so that you know, if if people want them and and they want to make them available, then at least they can. You know, most every biz, every uh, building I go in that nowadays has some kind of a small stand with availability of new fresh masks and uh, hand sanitizer if anybody wants it. And I do agree that that's something we should have. I have plenty of hand sanitizer. Yeah. I mean, if the, I mean, let's face it, the, you know, if the if the governor has put a recommendation in, um, I don't think you would ever do something like that because obviously there's a lot of blowback to do, you know, to doing that. So I think it's a good idea to make to suggest it. Thank you. Any further comments from anybody? I thank every each and every one for their time and everyone be safe. That's on this matter. Thank you. Missy, with second agenda piece, we have 72 Washington Street. 
Yeah, you know, let me just double check that because Margaret is here and I don't know if she's the engineer for both of those plans or just 132 Uxbridge Road. If she's just here for 32 Uxbridge Road, then I would suggest jumping over to that so Margaret can go ahead with her um, evening. Fine. Fine. <laughs> All right, Margaret, you're on. You all set? Okay. Uh, I'm here representing Frank Chesky, 132 Uxbridge Road in Menden. Uh, typical septic repair. It's a, it's a small lot. He, it, it's, it's pretty much almost across from uh, the Royal Fireside. Uh, so just a, a septic repair. I, I'm trying to fit a, a septic on the same lot as a well. So uh, he doesn't have enough, quite enough room to be able to meet the offsets. So I'm asking for a waiver to the well instead of 100 feet uh, being uh, 88 feet from the proposed well and the back property line. Uh, Five feet instead of ten feet. And and if I'm correct, Frank owns the lot in the on the backside also, correct? Yes, he does. Yeah. Is that accessible? Is that a buildable lot at some later date? Well, it's a separate lot. I don't know what his plans are for that lot. I, I don't know if it'd be a, a buildable lot for a house, but he does have a garage on there, whether he sells that separately or not. The only access he has would be through his front parcel, so he'd have to get okay. an easement. Yeah, that's what I thought. What I what I was wondering was, does he have currently have access to Route 16 for a driveway at a later date for that back lot? But I don't believe he does. I believe it's landlocked, like you said. It Correct. would be through his lot. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And and the so currently we're looking for two uh, reductions in distances back lot to the well and well to SAS? Correct. And Missy, what was Tom Ryder's recommendation, please? Uh, Tom uh, approved it. He agreed with it. Then I do too then. Tom Fickner? Yes, I'm fine. Uh, if the recommendations from our engineer support, um, I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Alan? I'm on board. Thank you very much. All in okay. favor. A I motion? A, um, yes. <laughs> Alan? I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion to accept Tom Ryder's recommendations for reduction distance to well and reduction distance to back property line for 132 Uxbridge Road septic repair. I second. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Thank good you. evening. You too. Be safe. Bye bye. So, 72 Washington Street, Missy. 72 Washington Street. There's no um, engineer on here for that. So, um, I will quickly read Tom Ryder's approval. Um, the applicant is requesting a local upgrade approval for the proposed septic system at the repair for the above reference property, which is 72 Washington Street. Title V requires that soil testing and percolation testing be conducted in the soils in the proposed soil absorption system area. The soil sieve analysis is allowed for repairs as a local upgrade as long as at least one deep hole has been conducted in the area. The sieve analysis confirms loamy sand, loamy sand conditions in the soil absorption area. The engineer has designed the system according to DEP's policy. As this is a repair and the site limitations create constraints to upgrades to Title V new construction standards, I am recommending the approval of the local Title V local upgrades as with a deed notice per the AI technology approval letter that is that the site utilizes alternative systems. Very good. Thank you. Tom, do you have any thoughts on this? Tom Fickner. I would support uh, the uh, recommendation put forth by uh, engineer. Thank Jim. you. Alan? 
I'm on board. Thank you. Motion, please. Uh, motion to accept the recommendation for 72 Washington Street with regard to septic repair as outlined uh, by town engineer Tom Ryder. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Alrighty. Hold on, I gotta pull the agenda up. I think the next thing was to discuss policy and procedure. Yes. For uh, expired septic plans. Andy. So I call I filled you both in about the one in particular that we had going on that was um on Bates Street. Um the um uh, original proposed design plan by Shea Engineering was submitted on February 14th, three years, almost four years ago. This February would be four years ago. Typically a septic system design that is approved, an approved plan is good for three years if sometime before the end of that three year period, they know they're not going to get to it for whatever reason, they can apply for a one year extension that was not done. Here we are currently close, a month away, five weeks away from um, to, uh, four years, which is way outside of the three year period. The problem that was um, uh, came that arose was at that time, the fee was submitted for along with the application for approval, for inspections, for everything that needs to be done within our fee structure. Since then, they have stepped up to, to the plate. This one is a non-issue. They have stepped up to the plate. Somebody paid the additional 450. The, the exact same plan can be resubmitted. They, and then it goes through approval plan. So Tom approved it. The fee was paid. It's back in play. It's like it never was an issue. But what we should discuss is if this ever arises again, how would we handle this? We should have a policy in place because one of the issues that was brought to my attention by Alan when I had the conversation with him was that money did not get spent. So it got sucked into the general fund and it was dispersed elsewhere in the town government. So if in fact, they, we uh, sent it out for approval again after because it, because that Title V has that that regulation in there, so we can't just automatically say, "Oh yes, go ahead, shame on you, go do it." It has to go through the process, so it has to go to our engineer, whether it's Tom Ryder or somebody else. He needs to be paid for doing that job, so there's an additional charge. When the plan comes back and it's given to an installer and an installer goes and starts putting the septic system in, the inspections need to be done and the inspectors need to be paid. So to try and get the money out of the general fund at after four years is going to be a very tough thing to do. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's going to be a very tough thing to do. And as much as I don't want to see anybody suffer, I certainly don't want to see the town suffer either or the Board of Health or whoever is considered. So we, we, we should probably put in place an, um, some kind of a, uh, a policy in this regard. And I'd be interested in hearing from both of you, how do you feel about this? What are your thoughts in case this situation ever arises again? for us or for future board members to help protect them because Misty will still be here. Ah. <laughs> we don't by chance still have Mike Morelli on the call, do we? We do not. Everybody's um, gone. It's just, the, it's just the four of us. That's unfortunate um, because that was, do you want me to text him? Well, uh, if you could, it would be great. <laughs> That would be a, that's a good point, Tom. Let me see if I can catch him. Uh, you know where I was going, Andy. Very good. Yeah, I do. He, uh, I don't have his number. I thought I did. Bummer. 
Yeah, he was on the uh, FinCom for a lot of years. Right. And so the, yep. the, the point being is that, uh, and I, as I understand it, although we're currently in limbo with it, um, there has been an approval uh, for us to have a revolving account when it comes to engineering. I think what was left open was the amount of money. I think that was ever quote unquote specifically confirmed or voted on by the town at a town meeting. But my understanding, at least from what we've been told, is that we have a revolving account just for this this, this type of work. Uh, engineering fees, you know, collecting money for engineering costs and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, that aside, I mean, I think that alone will help once we get that solidified uh, and get it confirmed as the amount of money, I think that alone will help this type of situation that could crop up where we would not lose that money to the general fund. Um, I wouldn't want to, I, I understand the point about the money having gone from our budget into the general fund, but somewhere along the line, somebody benefited, you know, in the town, um, some need was met, you know, by that money. And I wouldn't necessarily want to penalize to just based on a technicality, um, somebody who, for whatever reason, had missed the quote unquote time frame and have them pay an additional amount of money. I, I think the way our budget's structured, I'm quite sure that we would not have had any issue in um, having that, uh, those costs uh, presented by our engineer paid, to be honest with you. But um, I, I think the uh, key element here is we should try to get an answer to this revolving account situation as far as our board's concerned and, and kind of put it to bed Mr. Chairman. Tom, just so you know, I, I text Lonnie and asked Lonnie to ask Mike if he can join us. He's he's trying to get a hold of him right now. That's a very good point because he would certainly be an, a, a, a advantageous to us to have his knowledge. That's a real good point. Um, that Thank would you. certainly circumvent any, any issue. I, I think it would anyways. I don't know how long monies can stay in a revolving account without being used before they say it's dormant and, and something needs to be done with it. I don't know if that's an issue because that, you know, that happens in banking. Yeah, I, I would believe, and I get, you know, Mike uh, or somebody from FinCom could best answer it, but my understanding would be that the account, uh, there is no restriction that I'm aware of on revolving accounts. It just allows for that particular department to maintain a little bit of better financial control. And I think I see Mike coming on board now. Are you here with us, Mike? I am. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much for coming back, Mike. Yeah, sure. Um, Sorry. I will, I will expedite this as fast as I can so that you can come up to speed. Currently, in the state of Massachusetts with Title V, when someone designs a septic system plan for a new construction or a, or a repair, it doesn't matter. When that plan is submitted to the Board of Health, a check is given with the application to the Board of Health. In this case, it was $450. The, the plan was submitted to the engineer. It was approved. It was sent back. You have three years from the date of approval to do something with that approved plan. We had an issue very recently within the past two weeks that the three at the end before the end of the three years, if you apply for a one year extension, you can do that and you'll get four years basically on the whole picture. So recently someone came forward, wanted to work on the system. It turns out that they never did apply for that extension so they've gone past the end of the three years. First of all, February 14th would be the end of the fourth year. So that being said, the $450 that they paid never got used for any of the inspections. It was absorbed by the general fund. Now, the, um, they can resubmit the plan. They did that. The question was, do they need to repay the fees? This is where you come in. If we did not um, penalize them, by charging them the fee uh, for the reapplication, 
and we just said, you've already paid once, and this is, how do we, it, it, and, it, and to get the money back out of general fund to pay the, the inspectors that do the, the inspections on the septic system. So this is where I'm going to segue to Tom Fickness so that he can explain to you, because he just did an eloquent um, job doing this about the, uh, the, the revolving account. Tom, could you take over, please? Wow, my, my new tag description for 2022, I am eloquent. <laughs> Thank, you. Always there, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Um, hey, Mike. Hey. Um, yeah, so in discussing this particular issue that uh, Andy outlined, what, uh, what I brought up was the uh, element of revolving account. Um, it had been our understanding that, that some time back, a revolving account was approved for the Board of Health with regard to the uh, engineering, I believe, aspect of the funds, such that's, that- That's my memory. Okay. And I think the one element of that was that there just hadn't been an amount approved at a town meeting um, that determined what could be held in that account. Um, so the point that I was making was that if indeed we do have this uh, uh, revolving account, um, situations like this wouldn't necessarily be a concern to try to recoup money, say, from the general fund again, because we would have funds that we would hold in our revolving account that would cover situations like this from an engineering, you know, invoicing perspective, uh, from a contractor perspective. I, so what I didn't know was um, if you might recall where the revolving account for Board of Health stood with regard to this aspect? Well, um, it only has to be established once. And my belief was that we did um, establish that revolving fund. Um, what I don't think was ever done was to set uh, a limit. And I think you have to have both elements of it being established and having a limit on it. Um, before you can start putting money into it, but what but you're you, what what you're what you are getting at, which is correct, is rather than that money every year going into the general fund, then what happens is it stays in that account. And the le reason for the limit, say you put a ten thousand dollar limit on it, um, any time at the end of the fiscal year you get over ten thousand dollars, then that additional money would go into the into the general fund. But you've always got that that cushion of the or that limit of ten thousand dollars that's there, um, and and the whole idea, right, is so that you have enough money in there so that the amount that you're collecting um, for fees matches what you're paying out to engineers for doing what they have to do. Um, you know that was the whole point of it, and of course, what it does is it makes it much easier for us to uh, fine tune that so that you know. Um, you know, we're not we're not using money for the wrong thing. I mean, if it's a fee, the fee should be used to cover the cost um, of whatever that function is, which is why this revolving account, I think for this would be appropriate. Um, you can't and I, I think you're making the right decision about, you know, giving somebody, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the ability to, to say you've already paid it once, especially where there's no additional cost. Right. I mean, if you spent money um, for, um, for engineering costs already. Um, and then, you know, they paid a fee already. Well, then you'd need to charge them again, right. To cover for the next fee. Correct. But if you've never spent any money, um, having somebody inspect it, or if they never have to inspect it again, well, then why would you charge them? Right. It would, wouldn't be a fair, fair thing to do. Right. 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 Yep. Okay. okay. So, so, what would be, what your, would be your, your take, take then, then on, then on what, would what would need to happen to, happen to establish, establish this, this second piece, piece uh, where we, uh, where we would have to set a limit or have a limit have approved a, by the townspeople? Town well, it's certainly the right time of year to be talking about it. We have a, uh, a joint uh, FinCom uh, a select board meeting, I think a week from tonight, we're going to start talking about the budgeting process. Um, you know, there, there are, and we could talk about other accompanying issues, but we we would obviously take care of this 
at this uh, at the annual meeting in May. It's the next opportunity we'd have to do it because that that limit has to be voted on at town meeting by the voters. So probably the the the, the most uh, efficient way would be to have uh, you know have your admin have have Missy send an email to the uh, you know the town administrator just talking about the you know the board's wish to move forward with establishing uh, this revolving account and to begin using it. Um, you know, so the money money goes and then stays and is used for what it's intended. Does that make sense? It does. Excellent. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, so these plans are good for three years. So monies that were collected in two, FY 18, 19, 20. What happens? Where's the seed money? to start paying the, for those inspections out of a revolving account if I don't have the money available to pay the bills? Well, what what we could do, um, I believe, is we would establish the account and, you know, we could we could budget money into that account um, for that purpose. I mean, in the way you would do it, I think, Missy, is you could probably, you know, go go back say 12 months um, and see how much you've collected you know you um, in, KVS, right what's that kvs should be able to tell me that right it, it should it should and I, I it wouldn't surprise me uh, i can tell you that our uh, our current uh treasurer slash uh, uh finance director is uh, pretty amazing with with uh, spreadsheets and uh, Excel, and has already uh, set up, you know, set up a, a lot of uh, an awful lot of uh, um, spreadsheets to, to give her a lot of information about money going in and out. And of course, we're only going to be using KVS um, this one more budget season, and then we're switching to a whole new system. Oh. Um, but you, you should be able to find out from the from the treasurer collector's office uh, how much you've collected for that purpose if you don't have some other documentation that could help you figure it out but then all we would do is you know at the end of the fiscal year you know we would move that money into the general fund which would which would end up being calculated into free cash and you know th there would be a way at at, at town meeting to um, move so much um, out of free cash, you know, to re to establish that revolving a fund amount for that purpose. And we'd probably have a, a separate article. Um, it would be very easy to explain to everybody that, look, this is money we already collected. Um, you know, people have applied for these, you know, for these plans. And now we just have to have the engineer, you know, go on site to inspect them. And, you know, we haven't paid that out yet, so we need the money so we can pay the engineers to inspect it should yeah. be a pretty easy thing to explain but yeah i would say you could talk to the uh treasurer collector treasurer collector's office and um they should be able to tell you so my, then my question to the board would be you have spent money you have spent money and paid from to review so do i need to Oh, wow. Money has been spent though on that property. You broke up, I think, on that audio transmission. If, 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 so if I can just use if part I can just of it, pay the engineer, our board, our Tom Ryder to review those plans. So money has been spent. So now we're going to pay Tom twice to review those plans and then do the inspections. If I may, Mike. Sure. The what Missy, I believe what Missy's trying to get across is when the four hundred and fifty dollars is paid with the application, out of that, a portion of that money pays for the function of the engineer to review the plan that the the design engineers have made and say, yes, this is a good plan. It works. That's one part of his fee. As the installer goes to install the system, there's three different inspections at that point. Each and every one is a, is a different uh, amount for those inspections. So part of those monies 
has been spent and to try and separate that, that gets very involved. Is that what you were trying to convey, Missy? Kind of. Yeah, all, all I was all I was getting at, Andy, was that it, it seems to make sense if people paid you know, an application fee, um, which I'm assuming that fee covers all the costs associated with it, it certainly should, right? It if does. it does, probably should adjust the fee. That's just my thought. But yeah, it does. If, if um if it covers it and uh you know you want to give somebody a break i i have no problem giving people breaks but at the same time you know if you if they paid a fee for for certain things to take place and now you know um they're going to move forward um and you know the uh the original fee they paid you know isn't going to cover all of the costs associated with that. Well, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure out. You, you know, you certainly can't do that. Do that too much before suddenly, you know, now taxpayers are paying for people's, you know, other costs, which is of course what the whole revolving account was supposed to do, right? Right. Gives you a good handle on knowing, you know, because nothing's ever perfect, right? But, um, you know, is the is whatever fee you're charging enough? Well, a revolving account is a really good way to give you a handle on it. I mean, uh, you know, making sure you have enough to cover all your costs. But I don't know. But the other thing I'm thinking is if it, I mean, I don't think you have the ability to, you know, to kind of prorate a fee or, or I mean, maybe you do, I don't know. But that would seem to be to be the fairest thing, you know, if he paid in 450 and the total cost of everything for this, system because it's taken so long you know now it's going to be 600 you know can you charge the other 150 i don't you know i, I don't have any idea um but missy makes a good point she always does all right well mike you've been a wealth of knowledge and i thank you very much for coming back to our You're meeting welcome. i have one more, one more question would you mind terribly if we had your yeah, of course not ready to write 508 498 7733 thank you do you have all of our numbers and i believe you've got mine yeah i'm uh let's see i, th I think it is alan are you are you uh phoned in right now Yes, Alan I am. Green. Yep. So is that your seven seven four number I'm looking at? Uh could be. Okay. So I think Tom, I don't let, let me just uh walk through here and make sure that I have everybody. Just bear with me here a minute. Sure. So Andy, you're 508 508 Yes, sir. Okay. And Alan, you're uh 1675 Yes. All right, and then Tom. Yes, sir. I, you know, you're logged in the same way I am, so I can't see your number. Yeah, I, I could give it to you. The right place. All right, what, what's your what's your cell, Tom? Okay, so my cell is seven seven four five seven three nine five two six. All right. Awesome. Oh, you know what? I I did you. I did have you in here. I just had your name misspelled. 
<laughs> Maybe you had me under Mr. Eloquent. Eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cross reference under silver tongue devil. Right. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, happy new year. Missy, Thank happy you new year, you too. I mean, Mike. Thank All right, you very take much. it easy. I just yeah, you're welcome. It's before you leave, Mike, I just want to let you know that I'm looking at the warrant from uh, FY 2022. Yeah. In the book, Title V, there was a limit spending of $25,000. Okay. So, so it's good. So you do have, well, so if you do have a limit, um, then, you, you know, what I would do, what I would do tomorrow, Missy, is um, reach out to Jody mm -hmm. and find out. Um, if, if we already have done everything we need to do to just start using that account and she may be able to transfer money, um, you know, into that, into that revolving account now. Okay. So just, just ask, I mean, sure. that's, that's the path of least resistance, right? If there's a limit already set and it was established, um, then let's see if we can just legally start using it and then this problem goes away so now you know exactly what you have and you know as long as the gazint and the gazauto matches right which is what we're trying to do right my like i said my only concern is is when you have plans that were done three years ago the money's not available for those inspections yeah you, you know you this might be an opportunity to, if you can you might want to make up a policy that, um, you know, somehow does um, deal with this in the future. So that way, when it happens, rather than wasting time discussing it, you already have a policy laid out that says, you know, when we have somebody who's reached that limit and they come back again and we know how much they've already spent, we know how much we need to recoup, you know, whatever the cost was, you know. Then, then that, that covers that issue because that is definitely an issue, right? It is. Alan Greenberg, do you have any yeah, more questions or comments? comments on Mike uh, no, I'm just along for the ride on this on one. one. <laughs> um, we just we need just to, need to um, uh, make sure make that, sure that our policy, our policy that, we that, have that we have is the one we want to keep. Wanna keep. Okay, we've got okay, some work to work to do. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. All right, guys, take it easy. Thank you, Mike. You too. All right, bye. That was a great point, Tom, and I'm glad you came. You know, started segueing to that, and and it worked out well that we got him to come back because he spent a lot of years on FinCom, and he's, that was a big help. Sure. My thanks to Missy. Missy, thank you for finding that uh, little piece there on the amount that actually yeah. helped seal it, seal the deal. I'm just curious because I, 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 I've asked the town accountant for help with this whole thing and I get nowhere. So maybe Jody will be um, better at giving me the answers to the questions that I have because I have kept a spreadsheet on my own since July 1 of all of the addresses and the amounts they paid was it a park test a septic plan and the date they expire and all that other fun stuff and and talk and tallying all that but you don't have enough money really to pay tom Ryder the last bill so i paid it the old way so i could get tom paid so um because like i said the town accountant was absolutely no help i wanted someone to show me how these work how do you run these i've never done one before and i really got no help so maybe jody is the avenue to go it's a new year so missy uh missy with that spreadsheet that you you've been keeping on your own mm -hmm. uh, and have you acknowledged how many of those have been completed and are checked off no, because they've only they've only been submitted. Like one of them was 132 Oxbridge Road. Um, another one was, um, you know, 149 Oxbridge Road. That hasn't been installed. That was only a park test. We haven't gotten the plans yet. So okay, okay. As long as you get, I'm sure you've got a handle on it. I have no doubt in my mind. Uh, just another quick question for you, Missy. Um, 
when Mike said go to um, Jody and mm -hmm. with the figure or with the spreadsheet and try and get the money, if that does not work, you know what to do next. Uh, I, I kind of I... follow what you guys were talking about as far as putting together a um, something for the warrant for free cash transfer. I know nothing about that stuff, so I actually paid Tom out of the budget because it was over five thousand um, dollars. That the original budget that you have. So tomorrow I'll go talk to Jody and say, "Listen, I well, what do we do?" Yeah. The other thing well, I to, the other yeah. thing I talked to Jody about was the whole screw up with the V&A bill. Um, I sent her off all of the emails and the vouchers that I sent. So I got to follow her up with that too. Good, cool. Um, so if, if by chance, if one second, Alan, please, if you and um, Jody don't come up with the answers, I hope you were writing, you do have Mike's phone number, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll text it to you right now. Go ahead, Alan. <laughs> uh, Missy, um, I, I, from the conversation, it sounds like the seed money has to be put into that revolving account. Well, that's it, what I was wondering. Right. And if, right, and if what's going to happen is because these septic plans are good for three with an extension four years, you might have to go back a period of four years, see how much money was collected in each of those four years and maybe take an average. And that might be what the suggested seed money is. And it might take one or two fiscal years of the money that we collect getting put into that revolving account up to a maximum balance of $25,000 for this to all even out. I don't think it's going to be instantaneous. That is the seed. I don't money. think it's. I can already tell yeah, you. I don't think. $25,000 in seed money for that. Okay. Because that's what you pay. I, I, yeah, when I've done your bills and everything, your budget is 20000 yeah. There's times you've gone over it, and there's times you've gone right at the 20000 So at a minimum for seed money, you would need 20000 to make sure that you had all the okay. money or maybe 10,000 because you're hoping you're going to collect the rest of it. Um, but okay. when you've got well, subdivisions. Uh, again, like I said, I don't think it's going to be an exact science year one with the in and the out. Because right. we're talking about something that has a four year maximum life expectancy. Right now. So my uh, question I, as far as septic systems are concerned. Uh, right. other, other fees that we collect that are related to engineering, they might come in in January and they might be expended in March. Correct. Those are going to balance, the ins and outs are going to balance real quick. It's the, the septic designs um, where they have such a long lifespan that it, it's going to take a while for it to even out. Right. Back, back to you. So my question to you guys, I guess, is what I need you guys, like Mike had said, you need to come up with a policy. So if someone comes up again this year, next year, five years, and they've gone a year, two years, three years, four years of an expired septic plan, what is your policy going to be? What do you want me to do? Well, currently, if, if I may speak, Absolutely. You have three years, and before the three years expires, you have the ability to pay, I believe it's $100, and yep. and a one-year extension, and that's Title V? Correct. Policy? So we have the same policy as Title V. Right. So that's the it's... way it would be unless we do something different than follow Title V policy. Right. So right now you're right, you're correct as far as your septic plans are good for three years. When you come to the end, you've got, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it. You did one for a couple of properties this year, needed a one year extension. You granted it. They paid the hundred dollars. Boom. So once that fourth year ends, 
or if that third year ends and they don't request an extension in years past, it would be you have to re resubmit because the plans no longer are valid. Even though you can submit the same exact plans, same exact application, but it has to go through the review, you, the, 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 the review process again to make sure from the time it was originally approved till now, no changes have been made to Title V. And then you would charge the 450. Now we got the revolving count. That's what I need to know what you guys want me to do. Tom, you have your hand up. Hey, um, yeah, you mentioned something I didn't realize that we had in play with regard to the extension. Um, I thought that the extension was more um, a, a paperwork issue. I didn't realize that we were collecting an additional hundred dollars for the extension. Yeah, that's been like that ever since I've started here. There's always a that one hundred dollar extension fee that they had to file to get the one. What, what is that supposed to be covering if? If no one's done anything yet, I mean, what is that extra hundred? So technically somebody could be paying 550 to do a septic for their fees versus somebody who paid 450 just because they extended it one year. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know why you'd have to talk to a previous board member. You know, I'll talk to Mike Tatro. Mike he was on the yep. If someone submits for that, uh, app applies for that additional year, does anything have to go to Tom Ryder? No. Okay. Okay. Well, there's got to be. What is the what is the work done on your end of it, as far as an application and a, 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 a along with the lines of what Tom was asking? What is done physically? Do you have paperwork to do refiling? Does the state get notified? Does anybody get notified? Nope, it's just a matter of me having a letter and then me placing it on the agenda for the for you to review. Interesting. AJ? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm going to assume that maybe in previous boards, they have the $100 fee to cover any uh, additional uh, expenditures for that plan. Um, in a, in a four year period, the fees for engineers, um, et cetera, you have to account for the increase. That would make sense, Alan, but I'm wondering, uh, do we have anything on our application, uh, file with a paper, whatever that may state that this fee may be increased if our fees go up? You know, something along that terminology, if our engineers, because everything's going out of sight right now. If if our engineer says, oh, actually, we're, we're dealing with um, Steve Donatelli now, and he's more money than Lenny was. So correct in the, in the time that somebody uh, dropped off a check in and in a, 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 an application with a, with a design plan, now say they did it last year. Well, the year before when Lenny was still here. Now we've got somebody whose their fee is more. Um, so that somehow we have to cover that. Do we have any terminology on that paperwork about that, Missy? No, because you use the state of Massachusetts form and Tom has his hand up. Speak. Oh, sorry. I, I was formulating a thought. I forgot to put my hand down for the last question, but <laughs> since, since, since you came to me, um, I just really kind of, I, I get, I get the discussion with regard to, you know, cost increases and so forth. And um, I would think if that's the case, if we're concerned about increases in costs, that should, for that should actually have us as a board having a discussion about adjusting the initial application fees accordingly. But this, to, to me, this added hundred dollars just simply from the standpoint of somebody's applying for an extension, if there's no initial really cost impact to anyone, I, again, I was kind of surprised we had it. And you mentioned it goes back to Mike Tatro. That was many, many moons ago. Um, so, because I've been on the board for 12 years almost. So, um, I, I would be in favor potentially of losing that, to be honest with you, that, that piece of it, that money piece, uh, and have it be a situation more 
of a case where we're looking at the reason. What is your reason, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Resident, for for the delay? Um, you know that sort of thing. If if technically nothing has to change, the plans don't have to be reviewed. If from a Title V perspective, the the plans are still deemed to be valid. Um, it just seems like we're hitting them up that extra hundred dollars really for no fair reason. Back to you. There goes your Christmas bonus, Missy. What bonus? <laughs> <laughs> Look right. what happens when I make an assumption. <laughs> All right, so we do have some th thoughts to do on that uh, discussion on that. It's not going to be decided overnight, but again, chew on that and let's come up with our best combined effort. Okay, so AJ, if I yes, may. Um, so we're going to keep the, the current policy that we have. You have three years, or you file for a one-year extension before the three years is up. That is our policy. We're going to keep that for now. Yeah, that's Title V, and that's yep. that's that's going to be done. Yep. Okay. All right. And if they don't if they don't get it done, they start over at this point. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tom, what do you want to do about that $100 fee? I mean, do we talk about it? Do we act on it? Uh, Missy, what are your thoughts on it? Um, well, you know, like I said, it, it, there seems to be no additional real cost being incurred for that additional 100 bucks, as long as the initial 450 covers covers the uh, the costs that go into into the plan. Um, you know, I, I guess along with what Alan had said with regard to our current policy. So does that mean that with regard to the situation that potentially could have been presented to us tonight, that we would have automatically had to have said that that resident would have had to have paid the 450 if they hadn't volunteered it? Or was it just the discretion of the board to determine whether or not any fees would have to apply if they came in late? I, I believe it was left the way it was left until we got the um, this, until Missy called me and said somebody paid it and they're all set. If we did, if push came to shove, it was going to be a topic for discussion this evening, and we had to come up with some kind of reasonable plan and, and figure out would they have to pay or would they be okay? So we, we've skated on that one, but it's certainly something that opens our eyes and needs attention. I just okay. need, I just really need a policy from you guys saying, yes, Title V says the plan's good for three years. Yes, you get the one year extension. After one of those are done, what I, I, the, the plan is voided just by title five they have to reapply anyways my question is the fee it's the money aspect that i need to know because once the plan has been exp is expired title five takes care of yeah they've got to resubmit everything all over again and it can be the same exact plan the same exact application but it's deemed expired by title five so that's what i need to know from you guys that if a plan expires whether it's by the after the extension or after the three years, what do you want me to do? That's what I need from you guys. Is there a fee or isn't there a fee? Am I supposed in to go my, back? In my, my opinion on this, I feel as long as it's on our application that, that the, all those words you just said is stated or somehow it's stated to the person that's applying and dropping off the paperwork and get here approve my plan, here's my check. Somehow, if they have acknowledgement that this is the case, you either act on it within three years or before the end of three years, come back and see us. And you can get an additional year. As long as that they acknowledge that, I think they should pay over again. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And, uh, and again, I will follow whatever the board directs, but 
that's what I need. You know, that's what we need clarification on. Um, if you want it on your application, then you're going to have to create because right now we use our the state form. The state form does not talk about expiration dates or payments or anything like that. It's used across the state of Massachusetts. So then you would can have you, to have a state form. You have we well, that's the thing. You'll have to add it, but then the engineer is going to make have to make sure that that is the 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 application that they submit to you. They can't just use the state form anymore. They will have to use your amended form. Yeah, that's not a big deal. That's on the the design engineer that's submitting the plan. Right, Tom. So, I would kind of lean toward not necessarily charging them the full boat all over again. I, I get the concept that from a Title V perspective, the physical aspect of the plans all have to start over again. And technically then we know that at minimum there'd be an expenditure uh, from Tom's perspective because he'll have to review them again um, just because the whole process had to start over because we're bound by Title V. So in a way, I think that kind of helps us. I just don't think necessarily that it'd be fair to the resident to charge them full boat again, if really the only added incurrence that we know would happen would be um, a second review by Tom and then everything else would simply just happen anyway and would theoretically be covered under the original 450 for all the additional inspection components. Thoughts? Tom? Alan? Yes. Yes. My, my <laughs> only concern with that is, and I see what you're saying, that the three inspections were never done. The engineer was never paid to do the inspections. So the only money expended was uh, the, the, on the engineer to do the plan approval. With a $25,000 cap on our revolving account, and Missy telling me that we're already spending twenty dollars to 25000 annually, if they've already taken three years and they've gone for a one-year extension and expended that time period, any extra money that goes above that 25,000 is still going to get sucked up into the general fund. And I don't know how often the town will allow us to increase that 25,000 because that $25,000 cap right now is going to be okay. The money should in a, in a year or two should come in and go out and it should balance pretty close. But year three, four, five, that twenty-five thousand dollar cap is we're going to have to get them to raise it because what we're going to spend annually is going to go up. And if they don't let us, if they don't raise that, then we're going to come up short. The in and the out aren't going to balance. Well, I, I would actually say that based on what Missy's indicating with what our costs are now, um, that we now actually should be requesting an increase to that limit to maybe another 10,000, to be honest with you. I wouldn't want to wait because costs have, you know, increased across the board for pretty much everything. And if we're that close now, I don't want to wait to potentially hit the ceiling. You'd always want to know you have a little bit of a cushion so to be honest with you, I think we should be uh, having discussions as Mike indicated, now's the time. Let's have a discussion and a presentation about the, this whole revolving account and presenting the concept that, you know, we're very grateful that we had a limit, you know, a, a revolving account established for us and that there was a X amount of dollars that were established for the limit. But what we're experiencing right now we feel that that limit is not enough and that we would like to respectfully request an increase of that and we should be able to justify why. 
I, I agree. I didn't know if we were in the position to go down that road. Um, I'm sure the reason and a limit is put on a revolving account is so that we can't just collect a bank of money and just have it sit there, um, which would defeat the reason to have a revolving account so that the ins and the outs balance. Um, so I, I agree. And the only reason I would want to increase that amount was so that we can hold on to the money's collected so that we have the ability to pay it out, not necessarily so that we have a, a cushion. Um, it, it's just a matter of retaining the money that we collect. Maybe that 25000 is too restrictive, if I understand you correctly, and I, I follow along with that. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Yeah. yeah. When, I, when I use the word cushion, I don't mean just to kind of keep extra. I mean, like you said, it would be to cover the ins and the outs. But you typically, from an accounting perspective, I would, I would probably want us to know that we're always going to have a little something left in that account um, annually so that we wouldn't have to get to the point of hitting the ceiling and then having to go to the town um, to seek the increase. It just seems to me that if we know where we're at now and we know what the expenditures are on an annual basis and if the feeling is that we're at the ceiling now, I, I don't think it could hurt to ask uh, or put forth a presentation to uh, request an increase based on sound um, evidence of what has been expended um, in, you know, last well, two and actually, years. Actually, that ceiling, that that limit, that twenty five thousand doesn't necessarily mean that twenty five thousand is in the account. It just gives us the ability to have that amount of money maximum in the account. Just because we have a twenty five thousand dollar cap on it, we may only have twenty two thousand in there. But we have the room to accumulate 3,000 more before that money goes into another account. So that moving that cap up to let's say 30,000 doesn't mean there's another 5,000 in there. The money will not physically necessarily be in the account. It just gives us the ability to collect and hold on to a little bit more money before it gets taken away and, you know, use for something else. Well, based on what and Mike had indicated, um, because the account has already been established with an established max of 25,000, we'd be talking about moving monies from a general perspective within our budget specifically into this account. So I took that conversation as being that we can move 25 grand into this separate account right off the bat, so long as there's no issues. Uh, and it just it's well, just not, getting reallocated a little bit differently under our budget. It's still part of our budget. It's just being reallocated differently. Yeah, but we have to have physically have that money to move it. N no, it's it's part of our well from a budgetary perspective. So from a budgetary perspective, you know that's where the money would be aligned to to that account. Yes, we're gonna. It's, okay, I. You know, I mean, yes, I get the fact that we're going to be, you know, so any monies that are part of our budget, they're going to have to get moved and re and align into that account. So if I had a bank book on day one, it's going to read balance 25000 And then I can add potentially, you know, monies that come in then could move forward and be added to that. But we also know we're going to have payouts as well. So I, that's the way I, I see it. I might be off, but. Yeah, I, I understand it a little differently. I mean, uh, unless we have in our budget and we physically have the money, I don't know how the money can be moved into that account without it physically being there. And the way I understood it was just because there's a $25,000 cap doesn't mean that the town is going to allow us the seed money of that amount. They might only allow us five. They might only allow us 10. That's why I believe it's going to take a, a budget year or two 
for things to actually the ins and outs to balance. But, you know, we, we, we both heard the same thing and maybe interpreted it differently. Thank you. At least two years and possibly much more than that to get the value in our possession that is truly ours. We're going to be working at a deficit. And that's a concern until the, until the waters equal out. How are we going to get this money if we're if they've only given us five thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars seed money, and we have to pay Tom Ryder five thousand dollars because he's done a bunch of inspections for us? Now we're running low, and we're like, hey, what the fuck? Right. So I, I think ultimately, probably all of our answers really hinge upon. The discussion that Misty will have to have with Jody on the issue. Yep. Um, but I say, you know, I'm of the mindset go big or go home with regard to what we're looking to do with the account. If, if, we, if there's a general feeling that we're already pretty damn close to the ceiling that's already been allowed, I, I think now's a perfect time to, if there's an argument to be made and it could be substantiated, make a presentation since the account's already created, make a presentation uh, that says, you know, hey, we have this revolving account, we know it's been determined 25,000, and therein lies the question, who determined that it was 25,000, and based on what what information, who made the call to make it 25,000? But That's we're right. finding that we're finding that based on invoicing and based on uh, what's gone out for cost, um, costs incurred, that in reality, um, this 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 cap needs to be higher. That's just my thought. All righty, got your hands full, Missy. Yep. I'm behind you all the yeah, way. We may see. find. We may find that Missy's conversation with Jody, she may say that there is more money available than we think in our current budget. I, I don't know. She's the keeper of the money. So it'll be very interesting to see um, her response to Missy's question. Uh, and then on the other hand, we could find that we've, you know, for this fiscal year, we may have already depleted um, based on what you said you had to pay Tom. We may have already depleted or depleted most of this fiscal year's, you know, monies. And not to throw a monkey Thank wrench you. any of this, but then my question, it also comes to, how do you pay Tom for attending your meetings? I usually how, give him two tickets to the Bruins hockey game every year. How <laughs> has he been getting paid? Well, I mean, it's, oh, it's in the budget, so I just pay it out of the budget, but there's... And unless you're going to include his time coming in when there's a local upgrade to a property's 450, that changes things. Uh, there is no fee for when he comes and speaks to you guys. So I just don't know how, again, it's a question for Jody, but I'm just throwing it out there. How do you pay Tom when it has, when he's come in to help you guys with your private well regulations? He's attending a meeting. It's X amount of dollars. How are you paying him for that if it's not fee based? So very, he's going to build us for those. He bills us absolutely. Oh, okay, so I would look that as part of an engineering expense. Any because this account is for any bill, any invoice that we get that's related to engineering, irrespective so of what the task, task is. So How do you get income for that? So how do you get paid for that? Oh, How are we going to get income for that, Tom? Well, that's what I'm saying. So now is an opportunity here with this revolving account um, to set, you know, set those standards. Because in my view, any bill that's submitted by an engineer, irrespective of the task, is an expense, is an engineering expense, right? But if the revolving account was set up strictly to pay for inspection and review of plans, what do you do when you've asked him to attend a meeting? So do we know definitively that is the specific finite description of the account? That was my understanding that the so, money. 
I mean, because you're otherwise you're not collecting any money for him to attend your meeting. So how do you pay him to attend your meeting? No, I get your point. Yeah. Well, then I guess there in lies the question. Do we keep a separate category and continue doing what you've been doing uh, for those types of invoices that do not go against any income generated through the application fees? So then you're still going to need a budget item. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It would have to be like a, an engineering administrative category. And I mean, I'm not that I'm not consulting. to be a team, but so what do you do if he comes and attends a meeting to talk about a couple of local upgrades? Do you charge that to the plant, like the meeting amount to the plans? And then if you happen to talk to him about something else, that's fine. I, I mean, or do you want meetings to be completely separate? And it's not associated to a fee, regardless if he's coming in to talk to you guys about septic plans. Wow. A very good question. I, I think these are all great things that, you know, we need to get, you know, solidified. And of course, in things that will have to come up or develop as uh, that conversation starts with Jody. And if you want, Missy, um, I'd be happy to be a part of that conversation. If it helps having a second pair of eyes, so to speak, uh, involved in the discussion process. Sure, I can let you know when sh she's available. I'm not available tomorrow afternoon because I have two um, webinars. One is for the purchasing of the stupid tests, and then another one is with the Blackstone Valley Collaborative interviewing. Um, public health and EPIs. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe probably talking about next week sometime, you know. If it would work better for timing, I can ask her if she's available, if she could give me a couple of days that she's available next week and I can throw them out to you. And then if you're available, you can pop on in. Yeah, yeah, I'd be uh, happy to do that. Sometimes it's, you know, it's good to have a couple of different, you know, voices. We're all, we all yeah. have different ideas and things that come through our minds and we could maybe cover cover bases. Um, you right. Know. And someone sometimes someone thinks of something that somebody else doesn't. So to me, the more you have at the table, so to speak, uh, the better. Missy, yeah. when does warrant close? When does what close? The warrant for the town special town meeting. There isn't a warrant right now. You're going to have the what? you have is the there'll be an availability for the annual in May. Oh, the and well, the annual town meeting. Isn't there a warrant for that? There is a warrant and it's not open yet. OK, good. They probably I won't do that until budgets, which I've already gotten your budget date to meet with Kim and the FinCom and all that anyways. It's in March. Very good. So are we done with that subject? Thank you. Thank, thank you both. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, exactly. Thank you, Jesus. This is uh, not that I want to go completely off topic, but I do want to talk to you guys about uh, what the other thing I have to talk to Jody about. I just want and I just need someone to confirm their memory last year that we were told that the bills, the fourteen thousand dollars that was to be paid to the VNA was going to be available through CARES Act money. Oh, that's a memory tester. Uh, I believe that was I, 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 that's correct. Yeah, I thought Kim said there was plenty of Cares Act money. And it was and Kim. I was just going to say the same thing. Yep. Well, okay. guess what? So, Aha. <laughs> I got an email during Christmas break from Michelle at the VNA wondering when they were going to get paid that $14,000. I said, I submitted the bills. I submitted the bills for a warrant date of June 20, June 17th of 2021. They never paid it. I got an oops from Eric saying, our bad, we missed it. We, we didn't pay it. And there's no CARES Act money left. 
Oh, well, Eric doesn't get paid for the next six months. So <laughs> I'm going to be talking to Jody about that issue, too, because I'm not getting any direction. And when I do talk to people, I get poo pooed and we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Well, how? How? What do I tell the V&A how they're going to get paid on something that the town of Menden agreed to pay? I'd Especially be sending them like directly this. to Kim. Especially at a time like this, we cannot afford to lose VNA. If they decide we haven't been paid, we're not coming to work today. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything that's COVID related. Have fun with that. I no, I yeah. I, I can't do that. I can't deal with that. Yep. Um so that's another thing I'll be working on. This kind of goes back to COVID, but um, I have been asked by different people when they can pick up their free testing kit. Um, Menden was not one of those towns that out of the 102 that received it. The only towns that received it in this area were Millville, Uxbridge, and Milford, and it was based on the federal poverty limits. Um, I do know that the housing authority in Menden did receive test kits, but that is because it's run by the town of Milford. Um, I, uh, I, I do not want to do the by next testing. Um, you have to have a medical person, um, vouch to purchase those. I don't have anybody to do that. There's a home test, um, webinar tomorrow at one o'clock, um, that I will listen to. Um, but I don't know what the funding source is to buy a bunch of t tests to hand out to residents. So I will be working trying to figure that one out i believe kim will also be on that um some that thing too but um one thing i did find out it is not re these kits are not reimbursed by fema dph said that yesterday so um can you repeat that part about what you said about the binex testing kit binex i guess some towns have used those but you have to have a medical professional sign off how did, um, hold on, I can ex tell you what. Uh, what are the qualifications for this medical professional? Nurse? I think it's a doctor or a nurse or somebody. Um, okay. Some mm -hmm. towns do have, I know um, Douglas has been able to get them, but um, they have a public health nurse, you know, Agniska signed off on it, I'm assuming, because she's a nurse. So it says the order. Oops, oh, sorry, go ahead. She, uh, so Jean said, yes, they are standing orders that need to be signed by a medical professional. We don't have a medical professional to sign off. Who said that? That's what the state requirement is, because I was talking to. Jean Gennetic. No, no, no. Danielle today. And I said, you know, everyone's talking about the home test, the buy next test. What exactly is who do you do? What do you do? How do you get them? Blah, blah, blah. So um, excuse me, I, be I believe AJ has an MD at the end of his name. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, Mad Dog. Ben 2020. <laughs> so the, the requirement to get the buy next is you have to have a medical professional to sign off. Um, I'm assuming a medical professional is like a doctor, like you would to get the vaccine. And that's something that and wasn't able to get the vaccine. Um, but it's the by next ones is the ones that you have to do all the paperwork and you have to report to the state. So, so if you do I the kinda, testing. Go ahead, yeah, I kind of wonder about that because our company receives by next test kits. Mm -hmm. and they're, dis they're distributed out to the uh, employees for, for testing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you have so uh, how, is, how is that happening then? Do you have a, 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 a medical doctor for the company or anything like that? I highly doubt it. Um, I don't I don't believe so. I mean, these have been received and distributed out to all the facilities around the around the country. Um, the client that I work for is a, it's a, they're a global they're a global entity. They exist throughout the world. Um, so Maybe they ordered it through another state. Requirement, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like if your headquarters is in Texas, well, maybe Texas has a different requirement. Well, they're actually headquartered in Massachusetts. The headquarters is Boston. It's State Street Corporation. 
so that's so, so I, I find I find that kind of interesting. That's that's what I'm being told. That's you have to have medical a medical professional to sign off. Hmm. Okay. It might maybe because of the size of their organization, they came at it through a different avenue, and maybe they had some central approval. Very well. Yeah. Okay. Do they have a medical professional available that you don't know about? Well. Oh, yeah, they, they could. They could. From a corporate perspective, they, they might. Um, I mean, they're they're not they're not in the they have no medical element to their business plan. Yeah. So they might be working with some some other entity that, um, that represents them. <laughs> well, that'd be interesting. Um, but point being is that when the Binax tests are distributed to us, we're doing them on our own. There's no supervision. There's no. You know, there's no oversight. We're, we're doing them as employees and just following the instructions. Well, according uh, to what Danielle told me today, they are supposed to be logged and reported to the state of Massachusetts. Interesting. OK. Get on it, Tom. <laughs> You'll be fired by tomorrow. <laughs> I don't need to. I've already got a bunch of cans of worms opened up here. I don't want to open it. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> All righty. You good, Missy? I, to be quite honest, I'm tired and I really don't want to talk about well regulations or dumpsters right now. <laughs> That's the only other two things that I keep reoccurring on your agenda so you don't forget. Um, I'll second that close, motion. We're close <laughs> on the dumpster regulations. We should keep forging forward at a later date. I know. COVID has taken a lot this evening, and I agree with you, and I agree with Alan, and Tom's easy. He'll agree with us. Absolutely. I'm in agreement. Do so, a motion, please? Remember, a motion. I just need you to set your next meeting date. Looking at the calendar, it looks like it would be Wednesday, January 19th. Works for me. I'm in. As I've always told you, tell me when the next meeting is. All right, January 19th at 6 o'clock. Sounds good. Excellent. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. <laughs> uh -huh. There you go, Missy. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night.